are listening to The Foundation of Wellness, a refreshing take on diet and lifestyle. Join me, Marisa Moon, as we tackle modern health with innovative and ancient principles. I'm a certified primal health coach and intermittent fasting instructor at marisamoon.com. Well, hey out there, it's me, Marisa, your host. Thanks for tuning in to The Foundation of Wellness. Finally, we're doing an episode on the thyroid. I've been waiting to find the perfect expert to bring on the show, and this is part one of two episodes on the thyroid. It's crazy how many people I know who either have a thyroid disorder or disease that they've been diagnosed with, or who I suspect has a thyroid disorder because they have all these unresolved health complaints and many of the symptoms that our guest is going to mention today. In part one today, Dr. Jenny Weiss explains what the thyroid is, why we need it to be healthy, and she gets into various thyroid disorders and why so many people are undiagnosed yet still walking around with thyroid dysfunction. And she teaches us which tests you should be ordering to confirm or dismiss your suspicion of any thyroid dysfunction. In part two next week, you'll hear Dr. Jenny talk about her favorite dietary and lifestyle protocols that she takes her patients through when they're healing from thyroid disease. She also explains quite a bit about leaky gut syndrome on both episodes because it's so important when you're talking about functional medicine, the root cause of disease, and autoimmune dysfunction. So here is a little bit about today's expert, Dr. Jenny Weiss. At the age of 23, Jenny was diagnosed with cervical cancer. She turned to alternative treatments for answers, and after just a few weeks of cleaning up her diet and incorporating nutritious foods, herbs, and supplements, Jenny received some amazing news that her test results showed no more signs of cancer. This experience led Jenny to pursue a career in naturopathy, or holistic and alternative-based medicine. She obtained her master's degree in pain management, and she's a certified reflexologist. She soon graduated from New Eden School of Natural Health in 2019 with her doctorate in traditional naturopathy. In her clinical training, Jenny was treating mostly patients with cancer and thyroid disorders, which fostered her newfound passion and her dissertation topic on holistic nutrition for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. She's board certified by the American Association of Alternative Medicine, and she's the wellness director of Good Success in Northwest Indiana. Dr. Jenny has a rapidly growing Facebook group that you should join called Holistic Health Circle, a naturopathic doctor's perspective. She operates a virtual practice and sees patients nationwide, and it's a pleasure to have her here today. Her enthusiasm is just contagious. Here's the interview. Hey, Jenny, I am so glad you're here. I'm going to call you Dr. Jen, actually, because you <laughs> earned it, girl. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm super excited. I know we planned this for a few months and I'm excited to be on your podcast. Yes, your plate is getting full. You are busy, busy, busy. So thanks for taking the time to do this with us. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem at all. I'm excited. I remember when we first met, you shared how passionate you were about the thyroid. And I, I don't even didn't even remember why that was until I read your incredible story that you shared with me in your bio. And I think that's a great place to start. Why don't you share with our listeners why you became so passionate about the thyroid? Sure, absolutely. So I didn't plan on becoming a thyroid obsessed at all. Um, long story short, so I wanted to become a nurse. I never planned on becoming a doctor, and I was 23 at nursing school at College of DuPage, and I just planned on getting my nursing degree and working at a nursing home. It's a stable income, and you can work anywhere, and I went in for my pap smear, and I was diagnosed with cervical cancer, and that was terrifying. It was really scary to be 23 and just even think about that. So, um, and my mom was a medical pathologist and she wanted me to go, you know, the radiation route, what the doctors wanted. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to lose my hair. I didn't want to throw my whole system into dysbiosis. And I knew a little bit about a tiny bit about wellness at the time in that, you know, chemotherapy and radiation, they kill the good cells with the bad. So I did a ton of research and I found acupuncture and my acupuncturist 
he let me know that acupuncture was not going to save me. But what I had to do is change the underlying issue, the root cause of me getting cancer, which was my own poor nutritional habits. So I was raised on, you know, fast food, McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, all of that type of stuff without ever, you know, thinking about anything. I wasn't overweight. I was an athlete, you know, played varsity sports and tennis in high school. And that was just how I ate. But, um, you know, the acupuncturist let me know that I had to change that. And so I did a lot of research. I changed how I ate. Um, I eliminated very specific things from my diet, added in some herbs. I did juicing. And I noticed after a few weeks that the whites of my eyes were like super white and my nails were growing really fast and my hair was growing fast. And I thought, well, I must be getting healthy. I want to see where my numbers are. And I went in and I got my first pap smear after the diagnosis, and it was completely negative. And I remember telling my mom, the medical pathologist, and she did not believe me. She thought I was lying and like secretly dying. And she was really sad. And she was crying on the phone to me saying that like, she's going to lose her daughter. And I was like, Mom, I don't I don't have cancer. This is what you know, and it was about $1,400 a month I was paying for herbs and my mom was helping me. And all she knew was she was bringing over my taki mushrooms like every two days, just like from Mariano's because that's one of the things that I needed. And so she's like, well, I want you to get a second pap smear and I want you and I want to be there. And I was yeah, like, OK, yeah. mom, I'll do it to make you happy. And she came with me <laughs> to get the second pap smear. And when we got the results of that several days later, it was also negative. And the first thing she said was, oh, my gosh, the maitake mushrooms worked. <laughs> and it was so much more than that. But that was just her thinking. So Aww. because I was in nursing school, I didn't want to go that sort of conventional route. And I was like, I've got to tell people that there's another option to to living in disease. And I thought about what kind of career I could do. I looked into acupuncture, but I didn't want to, um, I don't like needles and I didn't want to stick people with needles. And I found uh, naturopathy, you know, becoming a natural medicine doctor. So that began this kind of eight year journey um, towards that. And when I was in school, I really wanted to um, work on my dissertation on cancer and, you know, reversing cancer naturally, because that's what happened to me. But I got connected with Dr. Kirsten Kanoy, who was my internship supervisor. She's amazing. If she's listening to this podcast, <laughs> which I'm sure she will. Um, and she taught me so much about thyroid and so many of her patients had thyroid issues. And I started researching and I found like all these crazy statistics, like one in five women will get thyroid disease in the United States. And why is that happening? And thyroid disease leads to things like cancer and even diabetes. So I thought maybe by focusing more on the thyroid, you could kind of help people with the root cause, you know, so to speak, that leads to the bigger and badder illnesses. Um, so then I just became immersed in the thyroid world. And I studied the work of Dr. Isabella Wentz, who I know, you know, you've read some of her books. Um, she's awesome. And, um, you know, just reading up on it and researching and getting thyroid patients in clinic that they all had hypothyroid or hyperthyroid, you know, Graves disease, Hashimoto's and working with them and seeing what worked, you know, what nutrition worked and what herbs worked and which ones didn't. So um, it was a lot of sort of testing like that, but I became just thyroid obsessed and <laughs> that's my, my heaviest, you know, patient load is from is from thyroid for sure. So that's kind of um, how I got where I am. And now I love, I love helping people with thyroid disease. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I mean, your story is just so great. And it's like life just led you here because this is where you belong. I wanted to ask you, Jenny, did you say one in five people will get thyroid disease? Mm -hmm. One, one in five. And a lot of people, um, interestingly enough, up to 60% do not know that they have it. Which, yeah. you know, so if someone has a symptom cluster of all the typical symptoms from, you know, hypothyroid, they might not have an official diagnosis. A lot of patients I see, they'll bounce from doctor to doctor. They'll get diagnosed with fibromyalgia, depression, um, you know, weight gain, all this stuff. And the doctors, you know, conventional medicine, it's kind of hard for them to put the pieces together because they don't look at the holistic, the whole picture. Mm. So. A lot of one patient this week that I got, she's been to nine doctors and she's never had a hypothyroid oh diagnosis, but she has all every single textbook symptom that you can think about related to Hashimoto's. So uh, it, it's really interesting, like how the numbers are kind of 
the percentages are based on the diagnosis. Yes, you know, yes. 20 million Americans have been diagnosed, but how many more have not been diagnosed that are, you know, confused or frustrated? And, um, you know, that's. Yeah. Yeah. I'm honestly yeah. hoping that this episode is going to help some people who are confused and frustrated connect those dots and mm-hmm. maybe uncover a true, you know, diagnosis or solution thanks to what you're sharing with us today. Because I have heard that many times that thyroid disease is often overlooked or people get false negatives on their tests. And I, I'm so glad you're here today so that you can share some of those insights with us. But maybe we should take it, you know, back to like the beginning real quick. And I just would love for you to tell our audience what a naturopathic doctor is. Sure. Because I know a lot of people are not familiar with that term. Jen, Dr. Jenny is a naturopathic doctor. And I also would like for you to explain what the thyroid does in the body. Absolutely. So a naturopathic doctor is an ND as opposed to an MD, you know, being a medical doctor. So the N stands for natural. And, you know, we still have a very rigorous program. My school was four years full time. We still had to take the same core courses, you know, things like anatomy and physiology, pathology. I took biology, chemistry, you know, biochemistry, psychology, all of those. But the next three years in medical school are predominantly focused on pharmacopoeia. So learning and memorizing all the different pharmaceutical drugs, their dosing, their side effects, what to prescribe them in tandem with when you can't prescribe them and things like that. And the next three years for us are learning things like herbal medicine and nutrition. And then in clinic, instead of, you know, having rotations like, you know, geriatric or NICU, my rotations were herbal medicine, you know, and functional nutrition, things like that. So I'm not a licensed physician. I'm not a medical doctor. I do not have a medical license. I legally cannot prescribe anything order any diagnostic testing with a little asterisk there. And I'll explain that in a minute. Um, I cannot diagnose, I cannot treat anything like that. So we have to be careful because those, you know, qualities are reserved for the medical profession only. What I can do is educate. That's what a naturopath does. We provide education to our patients and then it's up to that patient to implement that education. So We work in nutrition, you know, is like the number one thing, herbal medicine, um, orthomolecular nutrition, that's like specific dosing of vitamins, you know, minerals and enzymes, Um, even things like hydrotherapy and reflexology too. But I mostly focus on nutrition. That's like easily 95% of what I focus on. So I'm board certified um, by the American (laughs) Alternative Medical Association. Um, you know, and, and there was still, I still had to have an undergrad to get into school. It required 60 credits of holistic health, which I had to get from three different places because not a lot of colleges offer holistic health courses. So it's still just as rigorous, but we focus instead of those extra three years focusing on pharmacopoeia, we focus on herbs and nutrition. And it also depends on what your major is. You know, I focused on clinical herbal medicine and functional nutrition. So That's what a naturopath is. We're educators. We're not physicians. Um, It's a good idea to get board certified, but it's very different from a medical doctor. Medical side is great. Um, You know, there's certain things that we need from medical doctors, like, you know, trauma surgeons. Absolutely. But when it comes to preventative, you know, even things like colds and flu and long term illnesses, um, natural medicine is a great alternative for a lot of people that don't want the harmful side effects of, you know, bombarding your body with with prescription drugs. So um, that's what great. I love to do is educate patients on on their choices. And it's up to them then, you know, what they do with that. Um, then you asked about the thyroid. So, yeah. so thyroid uh, looks like a butterfly or a bow tie. And it sits right here at the base of your throat. It's about two to three inches across. And your thyroid is a master hormone gland. It's part of the endocrine system. Your thyroid also has a couple partners. One of the partners is the pituitary gland. And one of the other partners is the hypothalamus. So what happens is the hypothalamus will tell the pituitary to tell the thyroid what to do. And they work in tandem together like this, you know, holy trinity of the endocrine system. And there are certain hormones that the hypothalamus release to tell 
the thyroid how much of certain hormones to release. And we can talk about that more in depth. But basically, the thyroid is a gland that sits right here, looks like a butterfly. It has two lobes. Um, some people genetically have a connector between those two lobes, and some people don't. Um, and and it's, it's okay, and both are healthy. Sometimes the lobes are separate, but it kind of, um, you know, wraps around the base of your throat, and there it sits. And the thyroid is so important to literally anything that you can think of. It controls metabolic function. Um, it controls how our bones are formed, muscle movement, sleep patterns. There's almost nothing that the thyroid isn't involved in, even metabolism of nutrients. So a lot of times patients will get digestive, you know, GI symptoms. And if they have thyroid disorder and they'll go to a GI specialist because they think that, you know, that's the root issue, but the root issue is really, is really the thyroid. So the mm -hmm. thyroid is super important. It can affect how we sleep. Um, it can affect wanting us to sleep like 14, 15 hours a day in the case of hypothyroid, always feeling tired, always feeling kind of bogged down or not getting enough sleep and constantly waking up, you know, having insomnia. It can affect our cognitive function, you know, how our brain forms thought patterns, um, you know, memory. And even a lot of times patients, the first thing they'll say is, I keep forgetting things. I forgot where I put my phone or my keys, or I forgot to put pick my kids up from school. Mm, um, they wow. describe it as brain fog. And that brain fog is really a key symptom of, of thyroid disease. Uh, uh, thyroid controls menstrual cycles, um, weight, your central and peripheral nervous system, your body temperature. So think about how important all those things are. I mean, it's a huge huge long list. Even your cardiovascular function is, is in part controlled by the thyroid. Your breathing, your cholesterol levels, the thyroid is one of the most important gland organs, glandular organs in the whole entire body. And if that's out of whack, our whole body starts, it feels like we're falling apart, you know? Mm -hmm. So thyroid is super important. Um, I think it's the most important organ that we have because mm -hmm. if we don't have thyroid. We can't digest food. Our heart won't beat. Our bones won't form. You know, how could, how could you live without thyroid? So that's why I'm kind of thyroid obsessed. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So important. And I'm always blown away by all the ways it's connected to everything else going on in the body. And I, I know that there's hypothyroidism, which seems to be the most common, but there's also hyperthyroidism. So I just want to enunciate that. So the listeners know that those are two different conditions mm -hmm. of thyroid dysfunction. And maybe Jenny, you can just quickly explain what those are for us. Sure, absolutely. So hypo means low and hyper, you know, think if you have a, a hyperactive child, that means really high. So hypothyroidism is low thyroid. That's where the thyroid does not produce enough thyroid hormone. And hyper is it's producing too much hormone. So what we talked about earlier, the hypothalamus, that produces TSH. TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. And that tells the pituitary to tell the thyroid how much T3 and T4 to make. So if the thyroid is making too much T3 and T4, it's going to be hyper or above, above normal thyroid. And then if it's producing not enough, that's hypo, low thyroid. And they have different symptoms, but oftentimes with thyroid disease, which makes it really confusing, Thyroid disease will vacillate between hypo and hyper, even in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is considered hypothyroid. So oftentimes you'll get symptoms of both, which really can throw um, a lot of conventional medicine doctors off. So wow. hypo wow. is low thyroid, hyper is high thyroid. And there's different diseases associated with both. Yeah. Like Hashimoto's yeah. is associated with hypothyroid. Uh, Graves disease is associated with hypo hyperthyroid. Thank you for explaining that. I know sure. in, in the community I'm in, the paleo primal community, there's just so many people with Hashimoto's disease and um, uh, it's often comorbid with other autoimmune diseases. And mm -hmm. um, it, would you say that's the most common thyroid disorder or is that, um, do you have any statistics on the Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Sure. That's actually, so what I did my dissertation on was, was reversing the symptoms naturally with nutrition um, and herbal medicine and orthomolecular nutrition. So um, the title of my dissertation was Developing a Holistic Nutrition Protocol for Reversing Symptoms of Hashimoto's Thyroiditis. And it is the most common one I personally see. 
Um, according to statistics that I have read, it's accountable for up to 90% of cases of hypothyroidism, so low thyroid. But Hashimoto's, like I said, can vacillate, you know, between the two. Uh, 20 million Americans have been diagnosed with thyroid disease. That is, that's a funny number um, because that does not account for up to 60% of people that are undiagnosed but have the symptoms. So they might be subclinical, meaning it can progress that way, um, you know, if they don't get help. Or um, it could be, you know, their body goes in and out of the stages depending on how, you know, what, what they're doing in, in their life at that moment, how they're eating, those sort of underlying factors. I wanted to ask you to explain that for a second. Um, what makes the, the thyroid and the Hashimoto's condition go up and down and change to hypo to hyper? Like what's going on there? Is it lifestyle factors or go for it? It, it, it absolutely is. There's a lot of different... Um, you could call them underlying issues or root causes that contribute to Hashimoto's. There's no one cause. There's no like, and we'll talk about it more um, a little bit later, but there's no, if you eat gluten, you'll get Hashimoto's. Or if you had Epstein-Barr, you'll get Hashimoto's. Or if you have cross-reactive proteins, you'll get Hashimoto's. Those, you might get all of those or none of those or one of those, and you, Hashimoto's can still develop. There's a lot of different um, things that play into getting Hashimoto's. and if someone goes through, like we all do, you know, periods of being more healthy or less healthy, there's flare ups, you know, that can happen. And stress, mm -hmm. stress really exacerbates Hashimoto. So if we're stressed out, it can cause Hashimoto symptoms to flare, which make us stressed out because we're getting symptoms. So then the symptoms will go higher and then we'll get and it becomes this like crazy vicious cycle, you know, this this circle that the patients keep going in and they just want help and they want to get out of it. They want to break that circle. So, so explain to us, like, if somebody was going to the doctor while their symptoms are really exacerbated, but they don't know yet that they have Hashimoto's. Can you, like, kind of paint us a picture what that experience might be like, what a doctor might see or interpret that to be? Sure. That's a great question. I'll use an example this week from a new patient I just got. So um, she was told by a medical doctor several years ago that she might have hypothyroid, but they didn't know. And she just recently went to a medical doctor and was diagnosed with depression and put on an antidepressant because he said a lot of the symptoms she was creating for herself in her head, which is not true. And if you're, you know, doing a, a video conferencing call, like how I'm doing with you, and you're hearing a patient bawl their eyes out because they have all these symptoms like, like thinning hair and weight gain around the middle, and they're always cold. And even if they sleep 12 hours, they don't get enough sleep. That is textbook hypothyroid. That is textbook Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So a lot of patients will come to me frustrated. They'll go to their doctor. They'll get, you know, thyroid testing, but they'll test maybe one or two things. They'll test TSH or they'll test, you know, uh, T4 or T3. They won't do a very comprehensive, in general, in general, maybe not all medical doctors, but in general, they don't do a very comprehensive panel. Um, and we can talk about conventional testing versus functional range and, you know, even things like that. You know, oftentimes the typical picture is patient will go into doctor, describe their symptoms. The doctor will prescribe them something totally different for some other ailment that they think that they have. And let's see if this antibiotic works. They'll put them on an antibiotic. They'll put them on um, an antipsychotic, like with two mm -hmm. of my patients this past month. It is, it is crazy. And a lot of it is the training is so different, you know, from, from natural medicine. And a lot of them too, they, they don't, they don't have training in thyroid disorders and just how vast a symptom of array, array of symptoms that present itself. So that patient will leave frustrated with a medication that not only doesn't do anything for them, but has oftentimes dangerous side effects that have to be mediated by another medication, you know, and then that can affect what's going on really, which is they have hypothyroid, you know, and I can't diagnose them with that. They have to, you know, get diagnosed by a physician. So it's, it can be really hard. And even if a patient comes to me after going to see a medical doctor, I can say, well, I can, you know, see you for hypothyroid and give you a protocol, not a treatment, but a protocol as if, you know, you had hypothyroid and we'll see if your symptoms go away. And almost invariably, you know, they do. That's the case. But they're, they're frustrated. Um, they're upset. And mm -hmm. they just don't want to have these symptoms that they've been having for decades, you know, some of them. When we imagine that 
a, a patient would go see a medical doctor for these symptoms and maybe they've seen more than one doctor because they've been dealing with this for a long time. Uh, are you seeing some patients also go to endocrinologists and thyroid specialists and still getting the same kind of confusion from the doctor? Actually, yes, yes. And oftentimes even endocrinologists, they don't study specifically the thyroid. They're experts in the endocrine system and maybe they've studied you know, different aspects of it that they know well, but the thyroid is a whole, whole different animal. And there's so many symptoms and symptoms can vary greatly between two people, even within a family. I have mm -hmm. two patients right now that are sisters, were, had the same mom and dad, were raised in the same house. They both have Hashimoto's, but their symptoms are so different, even one from the other. So it can wow. throw wow. off an endocrinologist, especially if you're looking at conventional ranges for, um, and we could talk about that too if you want, but conventional ranges for, you know, TSH, T3, T4, um, even, you know, thyroid antibodies, TPO, um, you know, thyroid globulin, things like that. But, um, you know, oftentimes, yeah, it's, it's confusing. It's, and it took, it took me, I had to study just thyroid, you know, for years to understand, wow, there's so many different factors. There's different root causes and there's different mediators, which make the disease progress, you know, differently. Can you tell us what you mean by mediator? So a cause of a disease is what actually, you know, kind of like the trigger for why someone has, you know, a thyroid disorder. A mediator is something that pushes the disease along farther, you know, increases symptoms, uh, you know, makes you sicker. So a mm. cause of Hashimoto's could be, you know, exposure to the Epstein-Barr virus, you know, um, mononucleosis, also called like herpes virus 4. And a mediator might be eating gluten, you know, that leads to leaky gut, you know, and, and things like that. So there's causes and there's mediators, and even those can, can kind of overlap. So there's so many different things, um, you know, really to, to think about when looking at the thyroid in general. So that's why it can be confusing for an endocrinologist or someone that isn't specifically, um, you know, a thyroid doctor or hasn't, you know, studied, studied the thyroid. Well, one place that I often tell my clients or friends to go to is the Institute for Functional Medicine website. I, okay, I see a smile on your face. So I was going to ask you where you send them, but I always tell them it's ifm.org mm -hmm. and they have a patient resource center and you can find an endocrinologist or thyroid specialist there who also is trained in functional medicine, which is very similar to the um, holistic approach that, that Jenny is, is talking about. So. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of the IFM. Um, I have taken a couple of their courses for continuing education. I love them and I use their patient journals to document, um, you know, food intake because their journals are so, they're more extensive, they're more holistic in nature and they talk about even things like sleep and emotional and mental health and supporting and non-supporting relationships. They're a great holistic resource for patients. Um, now, you have to be a naturopathic physician or, you know, a medical doctor to to partner with them. But you can receive continuing education credits as, you know, a doctor of traditional natu naturopathy like I am. So but I am a huge fan of them. And they really talk about, to you know, root cause and mediator and how to properly document, you know, patient outcomes, um, you know, any kind of now in, in, on the medical side, it might be a treatment. What I do is, you know, holistic modalities. There's no treatment, no, you know, invasive testing or anything like that. But um, I'm a huge fan of them. So, yeah, that's a good place right. for right. sure to find an endocrinologist that is specialized, you know, in thyroid that has studied it, um, that has maybe a thyroid certification, you know, has gone to school for a little bit extra time. That is really helpful because the average MD um, is in, in my own personal experience and in my patient's experience is is clueless, you know, mm -hmm. just because of the lack of education provided. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're huge. I have okay. <laughs> Wow. So if I'm a patient and I've um, been dealing with symptoms for years and I'm feeling really frustrated because they said they tested my thyroid and it's fine, um, I'm maybe going to go to this Institute for Functional Medicine website, but they're not covered by my insurance. So mm -hmm. I want to know, like ballpark, how much have you seen these like more in-depth thyroid panels, the kind that you're recommending, um, the types of testing that's really going to help you come to a conclusive, you know, diagnosis or not. How much would that cost? Like, if can you just go 
get the testing somewhere else? Or do you have to go see a doctor who's out of your network and pay out of pocket for this, you know, one hour, two hour visit and get all this testing done? What, what's that experience like? So that's, that's really tough for patients. Um, a lot of the patients that I see don't have insurance or do have insurance and it doesn't cover those specific testing because you can't order them without a referral. And if that doctor does not think you have hypothyroid or any thyroid disorder, Hashimoto's, they won't order the above and beyond testing. So a typical doctor might test for, you know, TSH, T3 and T4, when really you want to test for, you know, free T3 and T4. That's really important, more important than the total. Um, all the different antibodies and, you know, thyroglobulin, um, all like the antibodies are so important because those are residual and they allow you to see, you know, what's, what's, allowed to be used by the body, you know? So same thing with free T3. Free T3 is the percentage of T3 that your body has free to use that is not bound up in protein. So T3 and T4 binds to protein. Over 99% of T4 binds to protein and is not able to be, to be used. So you want to look at the unbound or free percentages, you know, versus the total. And the total is fine, but as long as you get the free T3 and T4, because that is really what is what is able to be used. And if you're not looking at that, you're not getting true. Uh, a true thyroid panel, you're not getting getting true results. So, um, mm -hmm. someone you know that doesn't have insurance, unfortunately, it is you know going to cost a little more. They can do some research and see what labs offer. You know, there's different specials. Like uh, my school works with a couple ones, like MyMed Labs. They're FDA licensed and approved laboratories. We cannot order any testing, but we can recommend a patient to go ahead and order their own testing and they mm -hmm. can, you know, order their own testing. They can get, um, you know, a phlebotomist come to their house, you know, do the blood draw. There's facilities, you know, for that too. And they are paying out of pocket. So, uh, you know, it would be good for them to, to see and compare, you know, the different cost. Um, I know it, it could be, be a, a few lot hundred of like dollars. 400, yeah. Like three, $400 to it, get all these can. blood tests yes. and to yeah. get, do the actual laboratory send you results? Like they can't diagnose you, can they? They just send you the results and then you're supposed to share them with your doctor or what? Right. Okay. Right. They send you those results. So they'll send you, you know, what your numbers are for whatever you order. And they might recommend, like they might have specials where, you know, uh, you do a lipid panel where you do, you know, cholesterol and triglycerides or a thyroid panel, you know, TSH and T3 and T4. If you don't see though all the testing that you need on there, check and make sure that that lab has other testing that you can add to that, you know, like T TPO, you know, the thyroid paradoxides. Uh, antibodies, because that's really important too. the uptake. So that's how much is being used in circulation in your bloodstream and being delivered to the cells. But it can run several hundred dollars. Um, you know, there's unfortunately not not a lot of way. Yeah, it's totally worth it. Um, I kind of feel like we need a list or a checklist or a resource or a book. Is there somewhere you can um, guide people, especially, first of all, where can they find you? Um, if they want to talk to you? Where Where's the best place to reach you? The best place to reach me, so I have a Facebook group called okay. Holistic Health Circle, a naturopathic doctor's perspective. And I started it in January just to support my friends and my coworkers that always had questions for me. And I would post, um, you know, recipe videos and articles, you know, things like that, and then answer questions. And it just is has been growing, which I'm really grateful for. And um, it's been less than two months and it's already 1300 people have joined the group, which I'm, I'm so excited. Um, you know, I, I didn't know how much time I would be spending on that. And now I'm, I find myself spending, you know, more and more time there, which I'm grateful for. But um, that's the best place to reach me. And then I also have a website, drjennyweiss.com. Um, you know, people can book an appointment, read a little bit about me, you know, and the services I offer. They can email me at drjenniferweiss at gmail.com. I'm sure you can put all that up. Um, I you will. Know, your, in the show doctor. notes, in the episode description, I'll put all of those. So that's awesome because I think personalized attention is really, really important. And as you can see, she knows a lot about this topic and can help you. And is there a certain website or book or place where they can find the types of tests that they should be ordering? 
Yeah, Dr. Isabella Wentz's book is amazing. Um, The Root Cause. She went through her own thyroid journey, you know, herself. She was in, I think, pharmacy school, conventional pharmacy school, when Mm -hmm. she started having these crazy symptoms, Um, you know, sleeping 14 hours a day, thinning hair. She didn't experience weight gain, but she experienced, you know, a lot of other things. And she, you know, she called herself a guinea pig. She had to become a guinea pig. And she saw, you know, when she ate certain things, how did she feel when she didn't eat certain things? How did she feel? And that's how she got to the point of, you know, eliminating gluten. And gluten is just, it's a huge mediator, um, you know, for thyroid and and leaky gut and all sorts of unpleasant things. But that is, that is a great book, the, the root cause book by Dr. Isabella Wentz, there's more and more doctors are becoming aware that thyroid is just such a huge issue and it's blown up in the last couple of years. Myself, you know, is one of them, my clinician, um, you know, if, if anyone's listening to this podcast, they're welcome to ask me, you know, what testing to get beyond the T3 and T4. It's kind of a long list, um, but, you know, T3, T4, the thyroid globulin, um, you know, TPO, the uptake, the reverse, which is the exact opposite of free T3, it's it's the reverse. So it's the percentage that's free in the blood, but is it is unbound and it's still it can't bind. So it's still not able to really be used. And looking at all those things, you know, together help to paint a more complete picture. Um, sometimes even running cholesterol panels because thyroid and it helps regulate cholesterol levels. So you know that can even help to see too. And um, and I know we talked about expense a little bit, but sometimes it's good to run it, you know, one week and then run it seven days later and then seven days later, because even one one panel, it might not show exactly what's going on long term. So, you know, thyroid patients, they'll go in, they'll get a thyroid panel and the doctor will say, you're fine. You're in all the, the ranges when they're completely full blown symptoms for Hashimoto's but their body shows they're fine because it's just like a little screenshot yeah, of what yeah. exactly is happening right then. And can you imagine if you took a screenshot on your phone and showed it to your friend and here's what I did on my phone today. And it was just a picture of Facebook or just a picture of your email or just whatever. When you saw a ton of web pages, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you, you research, you check your email, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever people do on their phone, it's showing like 1% of, of what they did in that whole wow. entire day. So it really is just this little snapshot and it should be, you know, ideally ongoing. And of course, you know, the cost is a factor, but to really get to, to the bottom of it and find out what's going on with me, which if a patient has been dealing with, with thyroid issues for years or decades, in some case, they want to know, you know, they're willing to do what, what they have to do to help themselves. Besides how like big of a struggle it is and how much someone would be suffering, what are some of the long-term consequences of living mm-hmm. a life with undiagnosed thyroid disorders? Well, there's, I mean, there's a lot. Um, it depends on your type of thyroid disorder. It, it depends on how aggressively you are, are, you know, doing the right things to fight for yourself. Um, you know, if someone chooses to just eliminate gluten or just eliminate dairy, you know, or, you know, just take certain herbs, they might experience remission of certain symptoms, but not of others. Um, so thyroid disease and Hashimoto's, it's, a, it's an autoimmune disease. So it's our body attacking itself. Auto is self. So when your body attacks itself, that's kind of, of scary. It doesn't recognize something and it sends cells to fight against against your thyroid. So your thyroid can actually start chipping away and wearing away. And some people, un- unfortunately, um, who have had thyroid disease for decades, and it makes me very sad to talk about. So I'm going to try not to cry. I have a patient who she has almost no thyroid. It is gone. And she went to a doctor, a psychiatrist. They put her on on several different antipsychotics when all she needed was her thyroid looked at. No ultrasound was performed. Um, you know, thyroid panel was run and she was given medication for things she didn't even have. So now because she doesn't have a thyroid, you know, natural medicine or not, she's going to always have to be on her prescription. You know, the, the T3, um, you, you know, thyroxine is, is T4 and triodothyronine is T3. And then there's synthetic version, versions of those like, like levothyroxine or, you know, like thyroid guard, um, you know, with, the desiccated pig thyroid, 
Um, but she's going to always have to take something because you need those, those thyroid hormones. Mm. So, oh, go ahead. Well, just real quick, but yeah, I do want you to answer the rest of that. Some people actually get their thyroid removed. And is that done sometimes too early or is that what needs to be happening? Well, if, if the thyroid is removed, they're going to have to be on thyroid replacement for, for the rest of their lives in order to live. Like there's no negotiating that they're going to have to be on a pharmaceutical and there's nothing I or any other naturopath can do. That's mandatory, you know, mm-hmm. and they, at that point it is a need um, and they need that. Now there's things that you can do to help with symptoms but they're going to have to always take their synthetic thyroid replacement. Um, Long-term, some side effects are, uh, I have a patient right now who she believes her diabetes, um, you know, really came into play after she got her her Hashimoto's diagnosis. Um, You know, feeling very tired and and very run down for years and decades. A lot of people feel isolated, um, you know, lose relationships with family and friends. Um, you know, emotional issues. And it does affect your mental health, going from doctor to doctor, hoping someone will believe you and giving them this cluster of symptoms saying, my hair is falling out. I have weight gain around the middle. Look at my puffy face. And the doctor not putting them on, you know, an antibiotic or or an antipsychotic, you know, which that's like mm-hmm. crazy to me. But I've had so many patients where that's happened to. Yeah. And, you, know, you have to empathize with them and say, hey, you know, like, let's let's really look at this. Let's look at it from all the angles. Let's look at it from everything. Long term health implications. I mean, just decreased function overall of your metabolism and your body's ability to digest food because thyroid regulates metabolism. You know, when your metabolism is, that's at the cellular level, you know, uh, processing food and digesting food and assimilating it. And if you're unable to assimilate food or certain nutrients or have a tough time, you might have health issues because of that. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. other immune diseases might creep in because your immunity is low. And then you have a couple diseases, two or three or four in tandem. Um, I read a statistics that said the average hypothyroid patient has four. I mean, yes, yes. Is four. So, you know, long term health effects, there's, you know, there's a lot. But yes, there's a cancer risk as well. You know, thyroid cancer, um, you know, there's uh, a specific um, globulin that is used to test for for uh, tumors, you know, to see if there's any tumor cells there. Um, and it, yes, it, Hashimoto's hyper or hypo can turn into thyroid cancer, um, you know, if, if nothing is done about it. Cancer develops when our normal body cells, they're our own body cells, start to genetically mutate. And those mutated cells will replicate, you know, so they'll replicate faster and faster. And when a cell genetically mutates four times, so after four replications, that's considered a a tumor cell at that point. So, you know, it starts off really small and it grows larger. Um, Patients that have had their their thyroid removed can still get tumors even in the area, um, Mm -hmm. even if a few cells are left of the thyroid. So, um, you know, there's signs to watch for. And I know, you know, you talked a little bit about that, um, you know, in the email that you wanted me to uh, discuss here on the podcast. There's things to look for if you're feeling cold, if you're feeling fatigue, if you notice hair loss, especially in the crown of your head. Um, if you notice your voice is constantly hoarse, um, you know, there's puffiness in your eyes. Um, if your skin is dry, you're constipated or you're constantly, you know, using the bathroom. That's a sign of hyperthyroid. Hypo, though, is, is constipation. Um, you know, if you get a, a ultrasound and the thyroid is enlarged, that's another sign. But there's a lot of things to look for that will really help to prevent it from getting to the point of, you know, being completely um, irreversible. So that is that is the good news. Okay, wonderful. And I would like to know also, why is the thyroid removed? And do, do they go about that same order of action in the functional medicine world? Or is that just a conventional um, intervention? So while traditional naturopaths, which is what I am, we don't perform, nor are we licensed to, you know, any surgeries. So if you're asking me personally, I'm against that. Oftentimes, um, medical doctors will jump on the, hey, let's remove the thyroid issue because they see the thyroid as, you know, allopathic medicine is focusing on that specific organ, not looking at the root cause of why the thyroid is sick. So if the, if the thyroid is sick, they'll think, oh, it's the thyroid, let's get it out of here. As opposed to, let's look at the digestive system, which is connected 
to the thyroid. You know, Hippocrates said all diseases begin in the gut. And it's true. So what we're eating, you know, really affects um, our intestinal lining is very fragile. And if we're putting food into our bodies, that can lead to intestinal permeability, um, foods that we shouldn't be putting into our bodies, things like gluten, and that can affect thyroid. So, you know, if it's removed too early, you can't really go back and you, you're, you're going to be on, you know, synthetic thyroid. But even at that point, there's still things that you can do for your own health. Um, and a lot of people are taking their own health back. But a lot of times, you know, doctors won't want to deal with that patient and keep seeing them and seeing them. So they'll say, hey, let's remove this. Um, and I've had a patient like that, you know, she's always going to be on Synthroid and it's because she feels like her doctor had it removed too early. You know, that's yeah, what she yeah. told me. So um, not all doctors will suggest that they'll kind of try and fight till the end, but if they're not focusing on the root cause, um, you know, then, then that thyroid is just going to disintegrate, you know, get chipped away and then there's nothing left, which is just, you know, like having it removed. Whoa. I, I can just imagine all the things you've learned working with thyroid patients because there's just so many differences based on the individual and based on the mm -hmm. thyroid disorder at that time. So I think in the next interview, part two with you, Dr. Jenny, we're going to go through some of the lifestyle and diet interventions that you recommend to people to help them with their nutrition so that there isn't so many, you know, there aren't so many mediators like you taught me today. Um <laughs> So yeah, let's wrap up here for right now. We gave everyone plenty to think about finding the right practitioner or ordering the right tests or, you know, just being really determined to find out the root cause because there is something you can do and there's a whole community out there for you in the same shoes and um, oh, yes. plenty of support out there. So thank you so much, Dr. Jenny. Uh, we'll wrap up now and I hope everyone tunes in for part two because you have plenty to share on nutrition and lifestyle for the thyroid. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, wasn't that just eye-opening? We could go on for hours, which is why there's a part two so she can talk to us about the diet and lifestyle changes that she teaches to her patients, and you'll be able to listen to that next week. Please share this episode with someone who may be struggling with thyroid dysfunction because if the answers are out there, we want to help you find them, and that's why I brought Dr. Jenny on the show. And if you could help me out by leaving a review on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, that would be awesome because more people find this show when there are more reviews up there. So if you enjoy it, show us some love, and I'd really love to see what you think of the show. Thank you, and have an awesome week. Bye.